is Shan. Hello, I'm Bert. <laughs> this is Shani Reads. And it's the mid-year book freak out tag 2019. And wow. mm. um, we've got tea, it's a rainy Sunday. Um, but we've got hay fever. I do. So uh, we're not Sympathy. at our peak, maybe. Um, we did this tag last year. I'll put it in the description so mm -hmm. you can see. Mm -hmm. And um, we will jump straight in because there's actually quite a lot of questions about yeah. a lot of books. So, question what's the one. First one: best book you've read so far in 2019. So for me, oops, best book of the year so far is Chris Rush's *The Light Years*, which is his memoir of uh, growing up in the 60s and 70s. He grew up in quite a conservative sort of Catholic household and he discovered acid and um went off into the desert um it's yeah his memoir of coming out of the optimism of the 60s and into the 70s kind of where it all got a bit dark and discovered himself as an artist came out as a gay man um brilliant brilliant book i really loved it you're gonna read it yeah i really want to read it um i was saying it's got like a it's got a lovely cover isn't it and Beautiful. it's got a blurb by um emma klein on the back so yes yeah, yeah. thought that would help with yeah if you're into that era yeah. and that kind of feel then yeah i guess that, that yeah works. and then the one my um favorite book of the year so far is deborah levy's the cost of living um which you said you were surprised by earlier i'm a little bit yeah. surprised that it's my favorite of the year I, I maybe i've forgotten a lot of the books you've read but yeah. i think you read a lot of books you really like this year so. yeah it's there's about four or five which were five star and this was one of them yeah um i kind of doubt it's going to be my favorite book of the whole year but um definitely will be in the top 10 yeah i just it just thought it had such a lovely style to it and it hasn't saying that though it hasn't particularly stayed with me about what it was about mm. um but i do yeah the style of it was so great um and it's kind of about writing it's one of those ones that kind of riffs off yeah. into other areas same as the as first well. one really i don't remember much yeah but remembered it was yeah. good yeah so that's that one um, you need that for later don't you? yeah the second <laughs> book the second question is best sequel you've read so far in 2019, I haven't read one. Oh, okay. So well, my books aren't in order. Um, but the I haven't read that many. But the one I'm going to go for is Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertelli, which is a sequel to Love, Simon. Yeah. Um, so kind of young adults, contemporary romance. Yeah. Um, I really like her writing in a kind of... Um, they're definitely young adult novels. So yeah. if you don't like young adult novels, you won't like it yeah. kind of thing. Um, but they're just kind of fun but do touch on serious stuff or yeah. you know there's a lot about her being bisexual in this one um and and being kind of plus sized as well uh yeah i just think it's like a perfect little summer yeah. read of the day you know what to type expect, book yes i will oh, nice. like yeah. other ones that come out i would pick them up as well yeah that's that one question three new release you haven't read yet but want to um so i've chosen <laughs> T.C. Boyle's Outside Looking In. So again, it's that era, 60s, 70s. It's a novel based on the uh, based on Timothy Leary and his time. Um, I think it was during his time as a tutor in a, like as a professor in university. Um, and yeah, T.C. Boyle writes lots of these books that are based on like real figures and they're kind of novelized takes on that. We both read Drop City and really enjoyed that so i'm hoping to feel the same for this one i want to read that too that's two yeah. out of two so far that yeah and we read. both really loved the um uh timothy leary biography mm. um i have it's, america surrounded yeah that's amazing I so think. yeah i think i'm hoping the same kind of feel from yeah. that yeah um oh mine is freshwater by a quaker Maisie. um i've mentioned it a few times on this channel already because i keep meaning to read it and for some reason haven't read it mm. Um, so I did put it in my TBR for June. It's coming to the end of June. Haven't read it. Does it need to go on the top shelf of your trolley? Oh, uh, maybe. Mm. Maybe I need to reorganise my trolley. I think so. Project. Yeah. So that's that one. The next question. Uh, most anticipated release for the second half of the year? So what have you got? Oh, yeah. So there's an imprint called Hard Case Crimes who do uh, some kind of crime noir reissues. So 50s, 60s. Um, they're a really good series. I really like them. Um, they kind of look like those kind of those pulp kind of dime store novels um, that you find secondhand. But they're reissuing um, a Joyce Carol Oates novel, which is one of her 
early 70s novels. So this hasn't been published for 40 years. It's called The Triumph of the Spider Monkey. They always have awesome cover illustrations, paintings. Um, and I really like Joyce Carol Oates. I would like to read more Joyce Carol Oates and I think this would be kind of a good uh, next one for me. I've read like a lot of her, mm. but I haven't read any Recently, for a few years. Yeah. Um, I think partly because some of the stuff she said on Twitter I didn't love. Yeah. And that put me off. Yeah. But I'm willing to Yeah. Yeah. let that go now. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. I'm, I'm kind of interested in a really early one. Because mm. and it's kind of I think it's about a serial killer and it's kind of she's quite good at genre, I think. Yeah. So it's a crime novel. She's really clever, isn't yeah. she? So my um what is it, anticipated new release? Mm-hmm. Is this one, which is um, Chimes of a Lost Cathedral by Janet Fitch, which I've actually pre ordered already, so it's on its way. It comes out kind of beginning of July, and it's. Oh, soon. Yeah, and it's the follow up to um, The Revolution of Marina M, which is her um, Russian, Russian, <laughs> Russian kind of epic. I don't know if it carries on after this. Oh. I'm not sure if there's a third one. Oh, okay. I don't well, know. I just presume there was. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I haven't hmm. looked into it. Um, but. I read that one and loved it and then started buying all the Russians. We've got all the Russian books in the house. And Which is why I had One Piece and then yeah. started that with Charlotte and gave up. Um, yeah, but I, I love Janet Fitch. <laughs> She's so great. So Yeah. It's not my... I mean, Paint, Paint It Black remains my favourite Janet Fitch yeah. that I did really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, it's not her that usual one. kind of thing. No. Um, biggest disappointment. My biggest disappointment was um, the... Pure and the Impure by Colette, which is around the time we went to see the movie um, Colette, and we kind of unexpectedly really enjoyed it. Um, and I thought, I'm going to read all of her books. Um, and I ordered loads from the library, and I already had this one, and I've had it for years. So I started reading this, didn't really enjoy it. I found it quite, um, I don't know if the translation is a bit off or whether she just writes this really dense really metaphor heavy kind of pro style I, I know this is one of her later books so I'm quite, still quite interested to read mm. some of the more sort of light frothy earlier ones um maybe this wasn't the best place to start I was disappointed oh am I disappointed when um and there wasn't that much but mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with Ghost War by Sarah Moss um which just just did nothing for me I didn't and it was one of those ones I didn't even understand how anyone could think it was good. Yeah. I, I just I just don't get it. Confused. Confused yeah. and disappointed yeah. with this one. Um, it's really small. I didn't particularly like the writing. Uh, it I didn't like the subject matter really of these reenact these people who are reenactors. A bit too you, close to you're home. Not a fan that of was for me. Well, I don't want to say that as I work in a museum, but <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of what I'm saying. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Biggest surprise. So I've gone with the uh, Parker Posey book, uh, You're on an Airplane, which I got out of the library. It's definitely one of those books that I would only have got out of the library and I, I was kind of semi-interested. Wasn't expecting a huge amount and just started reading a few pages to see if, I, you know, if, if I'd get into it. And I really did. It was um, really eccentric, kind of weird biography. Um, told almost like she's sat on an airplane next to you and she's kind of like telling you and whatever comes to her mind about her life and her personality really comes through in it which I think is quite a rare thing for a I guess for a non-writer um, writing a, an autobiography so yeah I really enjoyed it it was funny quite light quite frothy a bit edgy it reminded me a little bit of Eve Babbitt's I had that kind of feel that LA mm. kind of feel to it so yeah Pleasant surprise. Yes. And my one was um, Catching the Big Fish Big Fish by David Lynch, yeah. which um, I gave five stars to. And it was just, yeah, I didn't, it's about meditation and about creativity. And I wasn't really expecting much at all from it. Like I, you know, everyone loves David Lynch anyway, yeah. don't they? But yeah. I hadn't really thought much about his, his writing. But um, it was just great. And it was inspiring and it felt profound um, it was really intelligent. I loved it. This is our year of meditation as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's the year of meditation. Yeah. <laughs> and he says such good things about it as well in that sense of like, you know, he, if you don't want to do meditation, he kind of gets it. Because meditation, 
I just think meditation is just not attractive, really, is it? Because you don't look good when you're doing it. I think it's attractive. <laughs> I look good. But I just get, I guess it's not like. Oh, it's, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There's nothing sexy about it. I need to read that. It's great. Yeah, especially since it's got McCartney and Ringo Starr. They were just interview. wonderful little interviews at the end. They yeah. were really short, but really nice. Yeah. And um, I was kind of saying as well that at the point when I read it, when I was reading that Waterfall of Stars, which I was liking, but finding it a bit overwhelming, this just felt that he'd written a novel, uh, written this book, which gave you space while yeah. you were reading it. And I think that's really clever. Just what you needed at the yeah, time. Yeah, but yeah. Do you think that's clever? Or is that just no, me? I just it think is. it was it's just, just like, he left spaces for you. Yeah. It is. And he, put, he obviously consciously thought that as well. Yeah, but maybe it's that thing as a filmmaker, you were really aware of yeah. that kind of the, the whole element. thing. Yeah. yeah. So that's that one. It went on a bit. The Your favourite new author. So it could be a debut or it could just be a new to you author. Okay. I have chosen Ariana Rhines, who is a poet that um, I read uh, Coeur de Leon collection earlier this year. Um, Sean bought me Mercury for my birthday. She's just really great. I think if you're struggling to find a contemporary poet that kind of speaks to you um, and is quite sort of raw and um, accessible at the same time, then yeah, highly recommend. She's great. I love her. I'm in love with her too and we'll hear more about that in a second. Um, but my, uh, what are we doing? Like our favourite new author yeah. it, is this one. It's just Saskia Vogel and I read yeah. her Permission this year, which has got this gorgeous cover and it's blurbed by Janet Fitch which kind of fits in with the, what, uh, the other one I'm just talking about um yeah this is one that has stayed with me yeah and that's yeah it's so nice when you just don't know what to expect and it's no. turned out to be way better than you expected yeah so it feels kind of really contemporary in that way of Pisces was yeah do you know yeah. what it, that kind of yeah smart female young yeah. authors but it was better and it was more nuanced and yeah. much more and i feel more intelligent i don't know yeah. you know i just yeah. felt it was a better yeah not that it's both the really like the pisces oh i really yeah. enjoyed the yeah. pisces and actually the pisces has stuck with me quite yeah, a lot as well yeah. i think i just yeah i was kind of i guess it's if you like the pisces you might like this too yeah but it's not necessary but i feel it's it hasn't had the, less um, obvious yeah it hasn't had as much of the sort of widespread yeah kind of i kind reviews. of feel like the pisces is fun because it's sort of it is quite bombastic, I guess, isn't it? I, yeah. And this is yeah. kind of quieter. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely I don't want to, you know, I'm not pulling Pisces down to, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> to hype up permission. No, no. no, I definitely want to read that too. That sounds really yeah. good. Uh, okay. The, um, um, is it the crush? Newest fictional crush. Yeah. Who we got? So we're going for newest bookish crush because, um, Oh yeah. We don't have a fiction. Yeah. So I'm going for author. Um, but we loved, uh, Sue and Megan's. Um, yes, we fictional did. crush. Yeah. So you can watch that or link that yeah, one. That was really good. Um, I am going for Lee Grant, whose um, I Said Yes to Everything was a book that I really loved earlier this year. Um, that's her on the cover. She's 90 odd now, but I still would um, would marry. <laughs> and she'd say yes. She would. So, she's great. If you haven't seen any films with her, she says she's an actress. Um, she did lots of theatre as well. You should definitely um, like. Google them. Yeah. Find her. She's great. Okay. Yeah. Um, mine is uh, Ariana Rhines. Yeah. Um, I've got a, well, there's a picture in the back, which is because it's on green. I think it's actually the same picture as the one I've yeah. got here. But there's a better one here. I just think she seems super cool. She does seem cool. Yeah. yeah. Follow her on Instagram and she's doing her readings yeah. and just hanging out, being cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> What's the next that. one? <laughs> the next one is. The newest favourite character. I really can't think of anything. So this. have you got anything? I haven't got one? anything for this. Okay. I, and I struggled as well. And I kind of, this one doesn't really fit in, but I went for it because it was one of my favourites of the year. Mm -hmm. and it would be nice to mention it, which is I Was There American Dream by Malika Garib. And it's a graphic memoir. So it is a memoir. So it feels wrong to say about them, about her being characters. But I thought she was kind of a delightful character. Mm -hmm. And also her kind of family is really sweet and delightful as well i was trying to find a picture oh well, actually that's kind of cute isn't it but it's got great um artwork yeah i love it and i just thought it was really kind of touching story yeah and if you're it's a cute picture there so if you do come from a mixed race family i think it would be something that you would relate to as yeah. well because her father's egyptian and her mum's filipino but then she lives in america 
and um it's a lot about that kind of your identi yeah. identity so. yeah uh, next one is book that made you cry i had a slight dampening when whilst reading joe oh. a memoir of joe brainerd by rob ron paget um yeah uh, uh, joe brainerd just came across so lovely in this book and i think it was really touching because it was written by um his best friend ron, ron paget so it had the real kind of warmth to it and obviously at the end uh joe brainerd dies um and it's almost like even though you know that's coming you're not quite expecting it you just read this whole memoir about his work and his life um and because it felt so intimate you got a real sense of him as a person um so yeah that made me sad Aww, but it's a great book i would like to read that were yeah. you saying as well that everyone loved him yeah he was just one of everyone had good good things to say yeah. about him yeah he just seemed like a genuinely good guy yeah yeah yeah. And that, I mean, I've only known his I Remember poem, but that just mm. sounds like a nice guy writing that. Yeah, he's it? wonderful. He's wonderful. <laughs> I picked this one, um, Daisy Jones and the Six. Again, partly because it needs to be mentioned, I feel, and it's Taylor Jenkins' read. Yes. Um, I definitely had a, a little cry, or a dampening, as yeah. you're calling it. Yeah. It sounds a bit weird. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I can't really place where it was, but I think it mm. was because it's because it's a book that sort of looks back at a time and I think it then becomes quite nostalgic and that makes you a bit emotional it does, maybe. Yeah. It's an and emotional that, read. Yeah, that sort of looking I think that thing of like looking back at a relationship as well and that sort of relationship just missed. Yeah. Is, yeah. I think that's kinda Yeah, it was really well done. It seemed really yeah, real, didn't it? Yeah. I mean there was the bit that annoyed me in it, but um oh, which yeah. is why it's not five stars for me. Yeah. But yeah. I gave it five stars. I love it. I gave it four. Yeah. <laughs> What's next? Um, book that made you happy. That would be, oh, Bert. Yes. <laughs> um, the Three Minute Universe by Barbara Paul. This is a new Star Trek novel. Uh, it says, the galaxy is on fire and only the Enterprise can save it. This is everything I want from a <laughs> Star Trek novel. Um, I've read quite a few of these and they tend to be like, I, I go into them feeling like I'm in a sort of mood to have a bit of a geek phase. And then I'm like midway through and I'm bored. But this one just delivered. It sort of ticked all the boxes. It had like humour. It had a really good alien species in there. Um, called the Sackers. <laughs> who uh, just like smell really bad. And if, <laughs> if you, um, you can't really look at them because you just throw up. Oh, okay. Yeah, but then they learn. So that, it, that you can to look at them. Oh, okay. No, yeah, the Sackers didn't learn. Oh, the okay. crew of the Enterprise learned. Yeah. But actually... You know, let's not judge. Okay, so like good message as good well. Good message, really good humour, classic. I like the picture of uh, um, in the back. What's his name? Kirk. Kirk. <laughs> Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, I'm picking uh, Aquacorn Co. by Katie O'Neill. Mm -hmm. What is happier than an Aquacorn? Nothing. Yeah. That's probably all I have to say. Yeah. I'll just do a little flick of the uh, page. It also has an environmental message. So, uh, you know, it's yeah. not just cute, but there's some of the, the aquacorn in a... An aquacorn in a jar has to be the cutest thing ever, really, doesn't it? Just sort of these ones. Probably. What's the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received? I'm just going to go with a nice, simple paperback edition of the Dharma Bums by Jack Kerouac, which came out last year. I bought it at the beginning of this year because I'm attempting to fill my Kerouac gaps. Um, and I can't believe I haven't read this one. Um, how beautiful is that? It's lovely. It's a Franz Klein image. And it's just kind of like that sort of, you know, yellow and the sort of framing of it. It's really simple. The, the writing inside is tiny. Mm. So that's going to be a bit of an issue. But I think it's a really clever design because it's like, it looks... 50s so it, it looks does, contemporary yeah. as well yeah, doesn't it true. and I, I think that's yeah that's good design yeah. isn't it because when did this initially come out 58 okay oh yeah 58 i was just wondering the pictures from 1950 but yeah i'll let that go yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah i can't i think i've read this one yeah. possibly yeah. twice so saying yeah. i get i get it confused with big sir yeah, yeah. so possibly i've read this twice or big sir twice because i know if, I've got them confused and just re read the wrong one. The nice thing about them is you can reread them and not yeah. remember because yeah. it's just all language, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. 
That's two. That's be um, my beautiful book uh, is this one, which is um, Guest Book by Leon Chapter. Mm -hmm. I also gave this one five stars, I think. I thought this was a pretty amazing book while also being a bit confused by it and not sure what it was doing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just got this gorgeous cover and then loads of images inside. There's some which are kind of coloured as well. Oh, let me find one. So it's lovely. Isn't really it? beautiful. There's sort yeah. of like found photographs and it's just a book that's sort of a little bit weird and strange but somehow makes it you feel yeah, yeah it still works yeah. and it's sort of even though it doesn't really i might read it again because as far as i could tell i couldn't see a a narrative in it what are you laughing at so i'm gonna have to read it <laughs> I again think there probably is a story in there isn't <laughs> <that>? <laughs> i well i felt they were just like lots of little stories that didn't necessarily right. link in yeah. a kind of collected fragment maybe asked type to thing. be read a few times maybe like so like a hallmark mystery yes that he just has no way you're yeah, gonna work yeah, out the plot yeah. We've been watching Aurora Tea Garden, haven't we? A book you need to read by the end of the year. What's yours? Um, I want to read The Cost of Living. I don't need to read it, but I think I will because I really like the first one. I've heard really good about things about this one, and there's probably going to be a third one at some point in the near future, so I'd like to have, have read this one mm. first. And that's mine. My one is The Years by Annie Erno, and um, I really love these Fitzcraldo editions. And this is kind of auto-fiction because I think, because it's white, you know it's non-fiction, but I think it's been reissued or published somewhere else as fiction. Yeah. So it's like, but yeah, I think yeah. it's one of those in-between type, mm. uh, can I scarred area. I love the Fitzcarraldos, but I kind of um, now have mixed feelings because you don't get any sense of what the book is. I agree. I mean, they're kind of like aesthetically... They're nice to have on the shelf. A beautiful, like if you had a stack of them yeah. next to, you yeah. know, a cactus. Yeah, they're really classy. <laughs> Be golden, <laughs> wouldn't you? But um, That's yeah, the Instagram all over the place. Yeah, isn't it? I mean, this arrived and it's got like a slight mark on it, so you know you can't keep them clean either. But they are they are lovely Instagrammable books. Yeah, <laughs> but I should probably read them. As probably well. read them as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not just uh, for Instagram. <laughs> um. That's it, I think, isn't it? That is it. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to also do our top ten so far next yeah. week at the end of Half June. Yeah, top ten. So a bit we'll be back then. Yes. Hopefully feeling a little bit better. Yeah, I've been pretty good though. Are you doing okay? I haven't sneezed or anything. Oh, well done. Thank you. Um, yeah. Anything you wanted to share? No. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.